oceans from the Pacific to the Atlantic, a new blue technique is taking hold. It's called aquaculture, and it's combating overfishing, climate change, and saving many endangered species. When you talk about aquaculture, why are you so heavily investing in that? We import about 90% of the seafood that we consume in the United States, so this helps put people to work in a way that helps sustain ourselves. Rafael Castellanos runs the Port of San Diego's Pilot Blue Economy Program. That includes two aquaculture farms, underwater farming for sustainable seafood and shellfish. We were looking for new and innovative ways to solve some of the big environmental challenges that we're facing. The port works with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to help farmers like Tori Polizzi, owner of Sunken Seaweed. So Tori, when, when I think about a farm, I, I, I don't think about seeing six buoys floating on the water. What is this? What we're doing here is testing the feasibility of different seaweed species that can be scaled up in Southern California. Underneath the surface where these buoys are, I just have a frame and it has lines going across it. There are like so many applications of seaweed. I focus on food, I like feeding people. And that's exactly what he did. Tori and renowned San Diego chef Jojo Ruiz prepared a meal of fresh local aquaculture cuisine. Abalone, an endangered native shellfish, now being grown here at the port. Yeah, of course that's great. He and seaweed direct from Tori's farm. Well, it's kind of like eating frise, except it's salty. Seaweed production has increased globally by nearly 75% over the past decades. And in the U.S., seaweed farming is the fastest growing aquaculture crop. Aquaculture farms like this one are the sustainable wave of the future from coast to coast. I met up with Norm Bloom, who took me out to his farm on Long Island Sound. You're an oyster farmer. How did you get the idea, hey, well, sugar cut? The state started talking about it. Uh -huh. And they were, well, let's make it go. It sounds like, in a way, you're almost ahead of the market idea. Well, first, we got to prove we can grow it. Right. Market. And how's that been going? That's good. Sugar kelp, like Tory seaweed, can also be used in food, cosmetics, or as potential biofuels. It's a new and emerging industry. The kelp harvested here at Cops Island is staying all in the family, used in a cosmetics line designed by third generation farmer Jeannie Bloom. Does that feel somewhat satisfying that you know, you're kind of continuing in a way your family's legacy? Yeah, definitely. I love um, merging the two together and if it's good for the environment, it's good for you. Uh, I got to tell you, the future of aqua farming is awfully bright. NOAA is currently identifying sites for potential farms all across the country, and the goal is to create jobs, improve food security, which is so important, and it also helps rebuild protected species and the habitats that they grow it in as well. Just that, incredible, Al. I can't believe how many uses there are for seaweed. Yeah, as uh, we were saying, biofuels, also uh, packaging, uh, you know, like a bioplastics. Yeah. Uh, it really is amazing. And again, we, you know, when you think about it, 90% of our that, seafood... A, what a huge number. ...is being imported. Yeah, if we can crazy. start, we, we'll never, you know, get it down to zero, but if we can shrimp, uh, uh, oysters, abalone, things like that, and, and different sorts of fish, then we're, we're way ahead of the game. Incredible. Right. That was awesome. Right. Thanks. That That's abalone. just the beginning. Oh, yeah. wait. Solutions. Yeah. That looked good. Yeah. Solutions. And that abalone looks good, Al. Ooh. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.